Did you think it was still framed? Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. Today we are talking about my top 5 favorite short stories of all time. As of right now. <laughs> this can change at any moment. Uh, like any of my top 5 lists. Uh, especially this one because I, the whole reason why I'm doing this video, this theme, this topic is because I came across a short story here recently that completely knocked you know, about half of my list down a notch. Um, number one and number two are still the same, but it knocked one off completely, and the one it knocked off is in From the Borderlands. So this is, this is a, uh, what's it called? Honorable, 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 honorable mention. <laughs> uh, but Gary A. Bronbeck's Rami Temporalis? Is that what it's called? Something like that. It's something like that, y'all. Uh, yeah, Remy Temporalis by Gary A. Bronbeck. Um, I don't even remember this story. Um, I need to reread it. Probably should have before I did the video, but you know how I do. Um, I, I do remember it's about a man who's collecting the pieces of the faces of the pieces of the face of God. Um, it's a story that has stuck with me ever since I read this. I bought this book, this, not this copy. My copy was ruined um, in a hurricane, but I bought this book brand new. I was lucky enough to find this copy at the library for a quarter, I believe. Either that or it was a thrift shop. I, I can never remember with these books. Uh, anyways, but this, this one is the one that, that it knocked off. This is an honorable mention. This is not actually one of the numbered entries. Eh, whatever. Okay, at number five, which used to be number four, that's the last time I'm going to mention that it was knocked down. <laughs> I promise. So, at number five, it is The Wriggle Twins by Gregor Zane, can be found in the Bad Apples anthology. I will, I, full disclaimer, uh, I am a part of it, this anthology, but I don't care if you read my story or anybody else's story. In fact, I think you can still get this story on its own, probably also an audiobook. Um, so if you want to, go check that out. I, I recommend the collection overall, but Gregor Zane's story is the highlight of damn near every single one of the Bad Apples books. Um, especially this one. He was able to capture the spirit of Halloween, the feeling, the nostalgia, all that stuff. Everything that makes Halloween epic to me is what he captured in his story. It is the best Halloween story I've ever read um, other than The Halloween Tree and I put these almost on the same level because I think Gregor managed to encapsulate all of Bradbury's thematic elements into a smaller story. Maybe not as epic in scope but the thematic elements are there um, and I was very impressed and it's a modern horror and it's a modern Halloween story that sticks with me to this day. So much fun. Definitely check it out. Uh, that's number five. And Gregor is also a friend of mine, but main reason why he's such a good friend of mine is because the dude is a damn fine author. I know it sounds like I'm tooting his horn, but I have a lot of author friends that I don't say anything about. Um, and the reason for that is either I haven't read their work or I don't enjoy it. But we're still friends. With Gregor, he's just a fantastic author, period. Next up, we have Pop Art from Joe Hill uh, that's available in 20th Century Ghosts. I'm not sure. I think of all these stories are available on their own over on Amazon and probably most uh, ebook uh, pl places that sell ebooks. But uh, Pop Art is one of the most original stories, and you're gonna you're gonna find that in two more of the, uh, it's going to be a theme for the th for three of these. Uh, Pop Art is one of those stories that just drew out the imagination in me. It, it really, it, it made me see everything that Joe Hill was describing. It, it's one of those things that you just have never seen before and you come across it and you think, that's remarkable. That it's literally, I. That it's something that needs to be remarked upon. Uh, it, something that needs to be talked about. How fantastic this story is. It's about an inflatable boy, a boy that is a balloon, and that's really the. It's not the theme of the story, but that's what the story is about, and his friendship with a real boy. That's one of those, the, the simplicity of it is one of the things that makes it so fantastic. And I really wish Joe Hill would get back to that form of storytelling instead of, let's be honest, instead of writing his dad's coattails. Just about everything else he has published 
since Nosferatu, and even Nosferatu has elements, it, it even mentions Pennywise, he mentions Mid, not, mid yeah, Midworld, I almost called it Middle Earth, sorry, Lord of the Re-Reads go, Lord of the Re-Reads going on right now, um, but it, it's the early stuff when he was trying to make a name for himself, uh, before people knew that he was Stephen King's son, it, is are, some is his best work not some of his best work it's his best work i've read all the stories in the upcoming full throttle i'm not really impressed by them uh strange weather was let down aside from a loft uh which is a fantastic novella but yeah i want more of that from joe hill because that story has stuck with me ever since i first read it years ago at number three the story that has completely blown me away. I read it three times today, two times with tears in my eyes. I finally got through the last one without, I kept on trying to read it without the emotions taking over so I could absorb all the themes and everything. This author is fantastic, brand new author to me. Thank you so much to my friend Terry for sending me this book. And that is Light Spitter by uh, Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya. I hope I said that right. I've been practicing. I probably still screwed it up. But uh, his book is so far. This is, this is a fantastic collection. I will get to the review. I should have been done today because I only have two more stories to read in here. But instead, I sat here, I sat here today and I read this one story three times. It is fantastic. And all I'm going to tell you about it is about a, a school shooting, college shooting scenario. Um, it is topical. It is important. And it is highly inventive and imaginative. Um, it is a very emotional story. I've never read anything like it. Um, it. There's probably other things out there like it, but I've never read anything like it. And it is an important piece. If you have not read Friday Black, which is the collection by Ajay Brenya, if you have not read this, you need to go out and get it. Because I'm only two stories from the end of this book. And I have loved, not just liked, but loved every single collection in here. I would tell you... Uh, my my favorite story, short story collections, but that would spoil the next two. So that's number three, Light Spitter by Nena Kwame Ajay Brenya. I'm so sorry. If I'm still getting that wrong, I apologize. So at number two, we have Under the Black Water from Mariana Enriquez. You can get this story in Things We Lost in the Fire. Uh, she is a Spanish ar author, uh, Argentinian, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. Let me check. Uh, uh, she is a writer and editor based in Buenos Aires. There you go. Um, but Under the Black Water is one of those stories that I feel does... It, it's not really Lovecraftian. I don't want to call it that. But it's more of a cosmic horror. But there are certain... Lovecraft vibes to the story, but the important part of the story has nothing to do with any of that. Every single time I've read this story, I've read this story m multiple times, every time I think about it, I pick it up and I read it. It's one of those stories that causes an intense feeling of dread. There's really not much going on in the story. The writing is, it's not simplistic. Um, in fact, it's kind of deceptive in that it feels like it's simple, but it's not. There's a lot underneath of it underneath the surface which uh, has a lot to do with you know under the black water but the the story is affecting in a way that I, I rarely ever come across every time I read it I get this this sense of unease um, that it, that is so prevalent in early Stephen King books like Pet Cemetery uh, The Shining uh, St. Holmes Lot th those books you have this deep sense of disturbia I guess it's right. I'm not exactly sure to use that word in context, so if I'm wrong, I apologize. But uh, this deep, unsettled, disturbed, disconcerted feeling that makes you feel uh, nervous and jittery and even maybe a little bit dirty and disgusted, but not in the fact like, uh, you know, you just saw a pile of shit or something. It's one of those stories that affects you deeply. Um, the, the disgust is deep, and then the ending is so, so simple. Um, one of the only scenes that has stuck with me more is there's a scene in Joe Hill's uh, heart-shaped box with a dude sitting in a chair in a hallway. That's it. That's that's all I'm going to tell you. But that this the scene at the end of this one is so crystal clear in my mind. And that's what makes it number two. At number three, unfortunately, I have never owned a physical copy of this book. Uh, I have the audiobook. 
I have the ebook. Um, uh, I have never, ever once owned this book. I'm going to throw it up right there. Um, and that is In the Hills, the Cities, from Clive Barker's Books of Blood, Volume 1. Um, the audiobook version of this story is fantastic. Sometimes I'll just download it and put that on and listen to that. I love reading the story also, but this, the reason why it's at number one is I've never read another story like it. Um, I'm not even going to tell you anything about the story other than how imaginative it is. Uh, one of the things that Clive Barker does well is he, he, makes, he, he makes visuals clear. Uh, he, he, he really, really drives that home. He wants you to see very well. And sometimes he's a bit maudlin, sometimes he's a bit, yes, yes, wordy. Um, I've come to hate that word, um, wordy. But, and we'll discuss that at a, at a later time. But with, with, with his, his stuff, that's why I have a problem with his novels, because he gets lost in the details. Um, and I've never been able to finish one of his novels other than The Thief of Always, and that's a YA book. Um, maybe, maybe it's even as low as children's book? I'm not sure. But uh, In the Hills, the Cities is my favorite because of the imagination of it. You see everything so clearly, and it is an utterly bonkers story. It's one of the stories that once you get in there and you realize what is going on, you have to see where this is going. Um, and it's, it, it's something that has stuck with me, and it, with all these stories, other than Light Spitter from uh, Ajay Brenya, I hope I'm saying that right. It's going to bother me. <laughs> uh, other than that one, all these stories have been in my head for so long. And it was so easy to make this episode of Top 5 Friday because of that. So definitely check out all of these stories. Um, I'm not sure that you can get uh, the, the Barker, the Enriquez, the Ajay Brenya. I, I don't think you can get those on their own. You'd have to buy those full collections. But I'm positive you can get, uh, well, almost positive. I, I'm not sure if they've been taken down or not. Gregor Zane's The Riggle Twins uh, by itself. Gregor, if you watch this, please leave a link down in the doobly-doo. If it goes to spam, I'll get to it eventually. Um, and then the uh, Joe Hill's Pop Art. I'm pretty sure you can get that one on its own. Have you read any of these stories, any of these collections? Do you like any of these authors? Do you dislike any of the stories that I chose for this list? Let me know all that down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!